everybody! So today we are talking about the next entry in my Disney canon series and we have done 10! We're on movie number 10 which is very very exciting and we're talking about one of the last of the package films. It's called Melody Time and this doesn't have really a whole lot of transitioning or introductions. It doesn't really have a narrator or a very strong theme. It's just kind of these random things put together. And there's the theme of music, I guess. And there's this paintbrush that's kind of painting the beginning of each scene. Melody Time was released in 1948 and this was really a an attempt by Walt to just cobble together whatever he could. It doesn't feel quite as crazy and weird as Make My Music, but you can definitely tell that some of them are leftover ideas. First of the shorts is Once Upon a Winter Time, and this features Francis Longford singing. There's no dialogue in this short. It kind of has a, a Courier and Ives sort of feel. It looks like a Christmas card, and it starts out with the this boy and girl and the boy is trying to impress the girl on the skates but then like kind of craziness ensues and the the ice starts to fall away and the girl has to get rescued and everything like that so it sort of takes an odd turn for the type of story it is but this one's pretty forgettable it's it's just there's not a whole lot to it. The next one is called Bumble Boogie and it has Freddie Martin and his orchestra and it they play the flight of the bumblebee and you basically see this bee that gets chased by musical instruments by piano keys and he gets kind of he's just moving all around it's really cool this one's sort of visually inventive and fun and it does feel a little bit like a lightweight Fantasia bit. We get a longer piece this 17 minutes and it is Johnny Appleseed and it is narrated by Dennis Day and I really like this short. The visuals are gorgeous. It really looks like a folk painting by Grandma Moses or somebody like that. Of course we get the story of Johnny Appleseed and him planting all of the apple trees and finding some way that he can contribute and uh, he is somebody who kind of understands the animals and understands nature and he decides to spread happiness uh, wherever he goes and it's got some beautiful songs uh, there's like a song about all the great things you can do with apples and I've never heard of apple pickles before but that's evidently a real thing <laughs> and i love the lord is good to me it's a great little song. I would say it's one of the more underrated Disney songs. Lord is good to me, and so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need. The sun and rain and an apple seed. Yes, he's been good to me. The next short is called Little Toot, and it has the Andrews sisters, and this feels very 1940s, especially with the Andrews sisters and it's just about a little tugboat. It's very sh similar to the short in Saludos Amigos about the little plane. This is the little tugboat. Not a whole lot to it. Next segment is called Trees and this has a very Salvador Dali kind of feel to it. It's a very surrealist feel which is heavy influence on the Disney animators at the time called Trees by Joyce Kilmer and that kind of takes you through the whole sort of life of the trees. Short is called Blame It on the Samba and this you get to see Jose Carioca from The Three Caballeros again and he basically teaches Donald how to samba. It's very similar to the uh, Bahia uh, bit in Three Caballeros. So it's, it's not that memorable but it's the last we see of Jose Carioca uh, for until Who From Roger Rabbit. He's briefly you see him in that. So there you go. The, the last short is the longest short, it's 22 minutes, and it is called Picos Bill, and it is narrated by Roy Rogers, and they tell the story to these little kids about the reason why the coyote howls, and it tells the story of Picos Bill. Basically, he's kind of a Mowgli type character who's raised by coyotes. There is this horse that nobody can conquer, but then there's this girl named Sue who comes in and she is able to conquer the the horse, the Widowmaker, I think it's called. Her and Pecos Bill fall in love uh, and they're just about to get married, but she has a dream of having a dress with a giant bustle and it gets her into trouble. <laughs> 
And so it's a really cute, cute short. It's a little, probably is a little too long. It, it doesn't need to be 22 minutes probably, but it works and it's beautiful. The Southwest visuals are gorgeous. And so really for me, Melody Time is strong because of Pecos Bill and because of Johnny Appleseed. I love those two shorts. The music is beautiful. The imagery is beautiful in both of them. They have really fun lead characters. Now there is a bit of controversy when it comes to Pecos Bill because in the original short he is smoking a cigarette and then they took that out of the short later on which I think is super lame. Like come on. And I mean you have Jose Carioca smoking a, a cigar uh, in Three Caballeros but you haven't taken that out. I don't the other shorts are kind of forgettable, but they're not bad. Uh, they, they're fine, but I would say those two make it really special. And this is probably one that people should remember a little bit more fondly than they do as far as the package films go. But it's not as weird as Make My Music, so it's kind of just what you prefer, what things you like, and yeah. But I enjoy it. I think just those two shorts are very, very strong. They're good stories, they're good characters, and they're just so beautifully animated that I give them a lot of props. So Melody Time, I'm going to give a B minus just because of the strength of those two shorts. And that is a huge portion of the movie, almost 40, 40 minutes. So that that's not nothing. So let me know what you think if you see Melody Time. And uh, thanks so much. Please subscribe to my channel. I'll talk to you later. Bye.